The fourth step is I kind of want you to do what we did with the Martin Luther King exercise. Here's the five pieces of multimedia, the five multimedia elements. Text, images, audio, video, animation. Identify for each of them if that element you find being extremely useful, somewhat useful, useful some of the times, almost never useful. All right? Having text on your page, is that a good idea? Maybe a good, kind of a good idea, maybe once in a while, or almost never. Likewise with images, with audio, with video, and with animation. So identify for each of them what you need. It's conceivable that you could pick only one. You probably, or, or it's conceivable that you, could, you would say that, that only one is very valuable and you really don't need the others. It's probably not going to be conceivable that all of them would be really valuable. All right? Especially when you get into step five where you go and you, you indicate which ones you're going to put on your page. That's kind of like what we did today with the Martin Luther King. In other words, we've identified these elements. All right. Are we going to put text on our weather page? Are we going to put images? Are we going to put audio? Are we going to put video and animation? Now getting back up to four, for each of the following elements, indicate if they'd be useful, how useful they would be, and how you would use them assuming that you would use them. For example, audio. All right. Audio, I don't know, I wouldn't think it would be in the upper areas of usefulness, but um, an audio clip telling people what a tornado sounds like, if there was a tornado warning, could be very valuable. So maybe you would say, well, under rare conditions it would be valuable. And what I would do is, in the case of a tornado warning, I'd have an audio clip of what a tornado sounds like. That would be a for instance. You know? So indicate how useful you would expect it to be. And then, it, then, then the second column, or the third column really, how you would use it is assume that you are going to use it, what would be the way that you would use it? Even if you don't think it's a good idea, ultimately, at least say how you'd use it. This one, then, you identify for your completed page what you're going to include, and then why or why not. I then want you to make something in Word. All right? Uh, you can do it in HTML if you'd rather. All right? Uh, but... I want the focus on this exercise to be in the thought process. All right? But if you want to practice your HTML skills, more power to you. All right? Now, let me go and insert a blank page here. So you may, for example, you know, you may decide to have a image on your page. So I'm going to go and insert a picture. Hope there's a winter picture here. There you go. Cold front's coming in. So we put an image. You know, and again, I want you to use real data for that day. So if it's going to be cold the day that you're working on, you know, you'd want to put an image that would reflect that. I would assume. All right. Then you might want to put like text. There we go. Oops. Maybe in the text box I say, you know, Wednesday is going to be a cold one. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe I have a headline up there and a bigger font or something like that. So really the main thing um, is to capture the ideas of how you would present it, how you would arrange it, what elements you would use, and so on. Now, if, you were, if you're planning on using a video or an animation or audio, again, 
feel free to play around and, and pop in a video from YouTube if you want to. I'm sure you could probably import one into a Word document. But feel free to also do something like this. If you're going to, uh, if for example there's going to be an audio of what a blizzard sounds like, you could, <laughs> you could put something like just the words audio of what a blizzard sounds like. Just explain, if you were doing this, what the audio, uh, video, and, and animation that you would include. So this exercise, again, is that the aim of it is get you thinking down the path of making deliberate choices about what you're going to include and what you're not going to include. All right? There's a lot of stuff that you could put about the weather. If we go to back to weather.com, you'll notice that for any location, there's a lot of things that we could see. What it is right now. What it's going to be like the rest of the day. What it's going to be like, like on an hourly basis? What it's going to be like tomorrow? What the weekend is going to be? And so on and so forth. All right. So there's a lot of things you could put on it. Your job and your challenge uh, in this is to distill it down to one page that will address the most important goals that you expect someone visiting this has. All right. For one day. Um, no, no, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, consider the goals, consider the goals that someone would go and visit the page for, and the goals that someone might visit the page for might be to plan something out in advance. So, in other words, try to get in the head of someone visiting this page and what they would have. All right. I know that, that adds a bit of a challenge to it, but, but. That's, that's part of the fun, is deciding how much detail you want to go into. All right? Now maybe, you know, if you want to say like they do, I'm going to have a link to something else. You could indicate on your thing, link to, you know, Farmer's Almanac forecast for the next year or something, you know. So you, can, you could indicate a hyperlink saying that you would link to another page. And you don't have to describe what that page looks like other than maybe, maybe give a title for it. All right. So really the big thing here is thinking in terms of goals, thinking in terms of which media, multimedia elements best express those goals or best tell that story. All right. And then putting it together, putting together a plan of how to concisely convey information to people that are going to solve their goals. Or I, I don't want to say solve their goals. It will help them fulfill their goals as far as this goes. Any questions about this? One thing you can do on this assignment if you want to start practicing, and I will soon make, to make available the typography unit, you can start looking at and playing with typography. Because that's really sort of the next big topic that we're going to talk about now that we've done the course overview and, and all that. And typography is nothing more than how you present the text on a page. Typography includes things such as the particular font that you use, the particular size of font that you use, uh, any sort of decoration on the text or, or, or emphasis like italics or bold or underlined or anything like that. But it also includes things like the spacing between words, the spacing between letters, the spacing between paragraphs. A web page that contains wall-to-wall -wall text is very difficult for someone to parse through, right? You know, it's very difficult. What typography can do simply by having different colors of things and all that is it can sort of mentally for the person structure and organize the page. So it's funny to start 
a multimedia class talking about text, because text is about like the most boring multimedia element you can think of, right? Everyone thinks of animation and video and all that. But yet still, text is one of the most used multimedia elements there are. You know, you'd be hard pressed to find too many pages that don't have text on them. All right? Why do you think that is? Why is text so widespread use, even though we can do all these great things? Because all the buttons are labeled with text. Well, they could be labeled with pictures. We could. It's more descriptive. Text can be very precise. So the one drawback if the buttons were labeled would be it might not immediately be clear. You could print it out and have it with you. You, yeah, you could possibly take a right. That's that's true. Text is very flexible as far as being presented on a screen, presented in other modes such as a printer and so on. Text is good as what it, at what it does. All right. Text is an extremely efficient way to convey information. All right. Um, if you compare the size of even a single image in terms of the number of bytes to the amount of space that is required to have a block of text, text requires next to no space compared to images and videos and animation. So as far as download speed and all that, it's efficient and it gets the job done precisely. And you can scan it, right? You can, you know, if you're not interested in every word, you can hit the, you know, hit the main sentences of an article you know, and, and scan through to see, look for things that you might be interested in. It can be printed. It's very, very, very flexible. So despite the fact that there's other seemingly more exciting multimedia elements to discuss, we're going to start our discussion with text and closely associated with that is typography, where we look at how we format that text in a way to, number one, make it more readable, number two, visually organize a page for someone. And number three, maybe even to express some sort of emotion or give a sense of some sort of feeling uh, in, in, uh, in our content. Yes? When you say a page, are you always referring to a web page? Um, that's a good question. Uh, typically, I am referring to a web page. Typically, when I say that, I'm talking about a web page. Now, this one, again, you can mock up in Word, so it doesn't have to be a web page. You could do it in HTML if, you, if you've done that before and you want to do that. But yeah, typically, that, that's what I'm referring to. Other questions? All right, we'll see you over in lab.